Hey guys and welcome by a new video. The video today is about 20 tips and tricks for the cycle frontier. I struggled a lot in the beginning so I'm trying to give you the knowledge that I learned in the last 9 days about this game. Uh, the first thing on my list is factions. Um, you would definitely need to st start and level your factions in the beginning. Uh, I would say go to your factions. On the right side there's Gorlev. On the left you have ICA and Osiris. Uh, I would mainly focus on ICA and Osiris myself, but everyone is free to do what they, they want. I will go to Korolev to show you quickly what I'm talking about, why it's important. So you get yeah. missions and actually campaign and jobs. The campaign and jobs give you XP, Korolev scripts and crypto marks or money. It's the easiest way to make money and to have a purpose in the game away from PvP. So I would highly recommend doing this because you need the soon. XP and levels to get to be able to buy better weapons later on. You can also craft some weapons but mainly you get it from reaching some faction level. So I would highly say in the beginning focus on your factions, do your missions and use it as your guideline through the game. For the second one, we're located for a moment over here because I want to show you where your quarters is. It's down here. The quarters is actually your hideout and why it's important is actually this PC over here. The quarter upgrades, it's actually an improvement of quality of life uh, in my in instance. It will help you upgrade your stash, your safe pocket, um, the supply crate you get every day. Um, I would mainly focus on the left side first for the upgrades. So if your upgrade is high up, you will be able and to do more, uh, more upgrades over here. For example, I did the stash upgrade, so I can now hold 135 items. Um, I can also put in my safe pocket like nine kilograms instead of five. So that's that's pog as well because I can now get some higher tier um, items into my safe pocket and don't lose them when I die. You can also upgrade your generators, your generators, why it's important. Um, for example, the K marks, every hour you get K marks. The higher the upgrade is, the more K marks you get. The Aurum generator is something like that as well. The Aurum you use for insuring, but you cannot get it at this moment in the game in the beta. Probably it will be some thing you can buy probably when the game releases. But if you upgrade it here, you get some nice orum every hour as well um, you can collect all that on this side of your quarters so you have your orum generator here the k-mark generators the supply crate you get every 24 hours you can upgrade it minus level two and then you have your insurance packages for when you insure something in this video i'm not going to handle insurance because i got a whole separate video about that one so if you want to learn about insurance be, sh be sure to check that one out for the third one is a short and easy one, it's just use tap to see your ID, uh, the ID is what you use to send to your friend so they can add you or what they send you so you can add them. Um, you can also click on this uh, bar to see all your stats, my stats are not the best, I do a lot of knife runs, I die a lot on stupid ways, but you can see some nice things over here like jobs completed, successful evacs and stuff like that. Okay, for the next one, we have how to divide ammo into smaller pieces. I saw a lot of people asking that they don't want to take 50 shotgun bullets with them. So it's just shift click and you can select an, a, a smaller amount. You can use the right or the left button over here, but you can also just drag into this bar and choose how much you want. So I would take 21, you click, it divides it and you can take it with you. It's pretty simple and easy. The fifth thing on the list is actually the middle mouse button on weapons. If you use your middle mouse button on a weapon, you get into the attachments um, folder. The attachments make sure that you can improve your weapon from like recoil onto damage um, on mobs. You have an, a damage dealer for PvP and you have a damage dealer for PvE. Uh, it's, it's quite important that you know all of the attachments for later on. But early game it just helps you putting on a scope on a gun as even on the sniper the sniper never comes with a scope so be sure that you use a scope onto that one because otherwise 
it's not going to be a fun time with the sniper. Like you see, like mine are coming now with a scope. I put it on, but normally when you buy a sniper, there's no scope on it. So try and remember that one. Also, another important one, and then it's one of the things that I still need to learn a lot about, is the gear printer. On the gear printer, you can actually craft a lot of materials. Like you can craft medium, large, and heavy duty backpacks. I craft often the medium backpack, it takes like 15 minutes, it's with easy materials. But you can also here craft some material, uh, some guns, they're, they're expensive. But it's more important to see here for strong sims and mainly the most people use it for armor. So it's quite important that you try to remember what, what you need to craft all these armors. You cannot buy these ones with any traders, so you need to craft it yourself. Um, I have a spreadsheet um, that I use, I will put it on screen right now, I will also provide you with a link if you want to. Um, for the purple and special attachments, um, it, it shows you what you need in what quantity uh, to be able to craft all these materials. Um, it's pretty important that you try and remember because some of these converters and stuff like that are very powerful and will definitely help you improve your gameplay early on but also later on uh, while you try and doing your missions your pvp and stuff like that so it's very very important that you try and learn this print cycle what you need how much you need of it um, and where to find it eventually also you have to tap here repair if your armor is broken after a raid you can repair it here for a small price it's also definitely worth it to do it because if your armor is already half broken you will go into the next raid you will probably lose your next fight just because of your armor that's almost already broken so i would definitely tr be sure to repair everything you have next on the list is learn the map and what do i mean with learn the map is understand what kind of zones in the map are like high danger where are a lot of mobs where can a lot of people be because a lot of people need to be somewhere for a quest or they go after the high tier loot so try to understand where those areas are on the map and also try to understand where you can find certain items and quests because otherwise you're just going to run around and around and not finding the items you need and just going to be behind and behind so try to know where the items are the quests are in advance before going in um, you can find a lot of the things that you need like quest item stuff on my channel i do a lot of guides for them so if you ever stuck on them try and watch one of my other guides for them um, it's pretty important that you know where to be so when you spawn in you know oh i have to go there or there so you have some plans in your head where to go this is only for if you're doing the quest, if you want to do PvP, you just run after every gunshot you hear. But I think it's pretty important that you try and know in advance where you have to be on the map and what is your game plan for that raid. Number 8 is a big one guys, it's stamina. So if you start to run you see the stamina bar uh, popping up and the bleeding. It's pretty important that you understand how this works and why it's important. Um, because if you run out of stamina while running from any striders or rattlers, even marauders, it will fuck you up. Like the amount of times that I died in the beginning just because my stamina was fucked, uh, it's like definitely 30 or 40 times, man. So I would suggest try to learn how to use your stamina, uh, what depletes it. Like if you jump, it depletes it. it, depletes it. Uh, if you run with your gun, it goes faster. To deplete depletion and you run slower than when you run with your knife so if you run with your knife you can do way longer with your stamina than when you're running with your gun and also if you try to regen like let's see with my gun it goes not that fast oh yeah i'm standing still but if you're standing still it goes very fast but if you're running and then walking with your gun it goes still slowly if you take your knife it goes way fast it looks it depletes way less and if you stand still and just walk it goes way faster back up so it's pretty important to understand how this works so try and and keep your stamina at an at a good level so you know when there's like a danger area ahead 
just regen and start running again to avoid some of the monsters try to run from the monsters um, but just keep in mind your stamina is very important oh Rushki. I don't speak Rushki, but but best of luck no English bro no English okay okay see ya so this encounter brings me into also T also T means like your push to talk uh, your push to talk can save you way more sometimes than left click um, if you're not good at shooting you don't like PvP um, I discovered that a lot of people are friendly when you talk to them so just try with T to talk to other prospectors and maybe you can stay alive without even need to fight them so the next thing is if you're fighting a straddler He's going to do this fire attack move, and if you're standing in it, it's giving you so much damage. So it's pretty easy to dodge. Like you try, you let him do the animation, and then you shoot him. Like if you shoot him in his face, it does the most damage. So that's the easiest way to kill him. So when fighting the striders like this, the red ones are pretty easy. You can just charge your knife attack and just one shot them at once. So I would definitely recommend just doing it with your knife, it's pretty easy, it doesn't make too much sound, so you don't attract any enemies. So the red strider, striders you can easily one shot with your knife, the white ones, they're the mean bastards, so be careful for them, you cannot one shot knife them. So if a strider is uh, hunting you, like this one, um, or a white one, striders cannot climb, so if you go up a few ledges, they're not able to follow you when they back off. So sometimes parkour parkour can save your life when being chased by a lot of like creatures. One of the most important things in this game is just turning up your head headphones volume like on maximum. You need to be able to hear what's happening in this game. Like everything gives you a clue. Like this ship you can hear it like you know someone is going to evac and you go you know where it is going to be. It's also giving you an indication when there's mobs around. It also gives you an indication when people are around. You know where the shots are coming from if they're farther in the distance and you can choose if you want to go there or you want to back off. It also, if people run too much, it gives you an indication of where they are because they start to breathe very heavily. So everything in this game gives you an indication of danger of, of what is happening around in the map so definitely try to play with the audio cues because it's one of the most important things there is in this game haha <laughs> see guys this is my next tip you don't always have to fight i could have stayed s silence and i would have uh, I wouldn't have died so that's my tip for you guys as well you don't always have to fight so guys my tip number 14 for you is always use your safe pockets for important items it's for like keys but it's also for copper wire for me for example I just needed one to complete an upgrade so I put it in here it's pretty easy because I died um, I still got it so it's easy for me to upgrade stuff now so I would definitely say use your safe pocket for the right items if you need something just put it in there also old crypt crypto so the old currency i don't think i have any left in my inventory but it takes zero space so just put it in your safe pocket like this this is the old currency it's 6k put it into your safe pocket it's easy and free money and it doesn't take any space in your safe pocket in base camp in the middle or like actually every blue guy this motherfucker is called Jeff, and no one likes Jeff. Jeff will fuck you up. So if Je Jeff doesn't have the nicest day, he will smack your ass back to fucking base. So be careful in the beginning. If you see Jeff, just get the heck out of there. You need way better guns to be able to, to kill him. So don't mess with Jeff. So something else you should know is a server is open for like six hours. People can evac and come in all the time so on the easy map it's like 15 people on the whole server and on the hard map it's like around 22 um, it's good to know that you're not like play solo playing against solo 
it's always like random so if we kill someone always make sure that he's not with like a second dude or third dude uh, because the amount of times that someone died while looting the first kill uh, I don't want to feed all those people um, so it's good that you know you're not playing solo against solo and a server people can come in and go out all the time okay for number 17 um, how do you see if a rock is completely depleted like you cannot always see like if there's some ore hiding somewhere over here so if you take the ore there will be like a little bit of the rock going away if you see the whole rock crumbling like this you got every ore that's inside okay so for number 18 we're at southeast uplink it's one of the two uplinks where you can actually put in data drives so what's the meaning of this is you put in your hard drive over here and you can upgrade it so if you press download it will go from like a gray drive to a green one to a blue one if i'm correctly so you need a lot of those drives upgraded to do quests and stuff and so on so it's pretty important that you come here sometimes but the downside is if you press download it will make such a big noise and so many mobs are going to rush you if you don't, didn't kill them beforehand so i'm going to press it and you will see how loud it is but just be prepared for like when you do it yourself so now it's charging and this one goes fast but the later ones go way way slower so you're here for a long time while that thing is telling everyone like hey here's someone doing something come kill him so be careful um you need to do this but yeah it's just so you're prepared so for for the next one we have um, an extraction point so you see where you can extract like it's the red ones extraction points it's only on two sides of the map or like actually at two places at the map where you can go um, you go to the platform you press Y to actually call the ship and then it will come and arrive be careful it takes some time a lot of people are getting like evac kill turn so try to hide somewhere underneath um, don't send anywhere on this platform because the ship will crush you it will do somewhere like around like 800,000 damage so I don't think you will be able to survive it so most of the time I just put myself somewhere on the side like this uh, and I wait till the ship is there the ship has actually two stages when it lands so you have the landing it takes some time and then it makes an effort to go up and I will show you a neat trick that took me like 20 30 rates to figure out so maybe this tip can help you to time your run even better so you just have to time your run so you're there just in time so you just wait uh, on a reasonable distance until the ship goes into its second stage um, so in a second it's going to say that's going to launch I'm just going to get close because I want the animation to be shown so now it's leaving and you have to Evac ship is taking off and just above it you see the purple bar filling up and if the bar is full the ship will leave um, this time it, it, it filled a little bit off but if the purple bar is full the ship will leave so you can try and get your run timed so you get there like just in time so the last one are the two world events the first one is a storm this one happens like every 30 minutes or so um, it means that you need to stay inside evex will be offline you can go outside but then you have to dodge the thunder uh, what's happening in the storm is actually the world is kind of resetting and also you can find some special materials during the night so sometimes you have to go out for some missions the second one is the meteor storm the meteor storm happens quite often it just shoots a lot of meteor uh, meteorites into the world uh, they drop meteor charts and the big one at the end drops a meteor core you need that one for a mission as well so now you know what the both world events are so this is also the end of my 20 tips and tricks for beginners i really hope this one helps you i hope it learned you some new stuff and if it did please leave a like and see you in the next one bye, -bye.